My name is Tom Wolf, and I have a passion for collecting menorahs, which I did in collaboration with my late wife, Valerie Wolf, and my partner, Susan Dennison. When did it start? I don't know exactly, but it probably about 30 years ago, because my late wife, Valerie, was the head of the Judaica shop at Turo Synagogue in New Orleans. She had great taste for purchasing things and went through a lot of different bulletins and books to order different things, including menorahs. And then it really took on a life of its own. And whenever there was an opportunity, wherever we went, we would always look for menorahs. And if we found one we liked, we never hesitated. We purchased them right away. My son, Mark, I remember, who was in religious school at Turos, and I got made a menorah, which was very well done and, of course, very meaningful for him as well as for us. We probably have about 55 to 60 menorahs, and we have them, actually, some from all over the world. Most recently, we got one in Morocco, and we also got a couple in the Czech Republic. This I did with Sue Dennison. The irony is one of them that we purchased in the Czech Republic was actually made of Murano glass from Italy. I'm sure many of you know Hanukkah is really a minor Jewish holiday, but perhaps the most popular Jewish holiday, probably in part because it overlaps with Christmas, it's also considered to be the Festival of Lights, and many of you know the story about the oil that was only supposed to last for one day, that lasted actually for eight days, which is why we celebrate eight days of Hanukkah. That can symbolize that light comes out of darkness. Even when you go through some hard times, there can be light at the end of the tunnel. There are actually two major themes that I wanted to emphasize relating to the festival of Hanukkah. One is a lot of my childhood memories of having Hanukkah celebrations with my family and our close friends in Cincinnati, Ohio, and remember all the gifts that we got for the eight days of Hanukkah, the many games that we played, including dreidel, the wonderful food, including potato latkes, uh, the songs that we sang, which were very moving and come back to mind during services we've had here at uh, Judea Reform, lighting the candles and also dressing up, particularly during uh, synagogue services. I guess the second theme has to do with important religious themes that come through for me, and that has to do with being able to practice your beliefs and your religious practices and traditions, which the Jews were not able to do. And the Syrians and Greeks discriminated against them and forced them to worship idols. And as you know, the story of Hanukkah, the Maccabees defeated them, and then the temple was cleaned and rededicated. And Hanukkah actually means dedication. My parents were immigrants from Germany and they were discriminated against and forced to leave and luckily had sponsors in Cincinnati, Ohio, where they relocated and I was born. But what comes to mind is that anti-Semitism is alive and well, I think in the United States and throughout the world, and that's very upsetting to me and brings back the continuity of discrimination against Jews, but not just Jews, people of all different religions and races um, and income levels and all the inequalities that we're talking about going on today. So it's really up to each one of us to talk about that, our beliefs, but perhaps more importantly and consistent with the values of Judaism to act upon those beliefs, to try and counteract the discrimination through our deeds and our actions and our behaviors. It really brings me great pleasure to be able to share some of my collection with all of you and thank you for taking the time to observe it. Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. I hope it's a healthy and fulfilling New Year for all of you.